Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. I'm going to paint some cherry blossoms today. They're absolutely gorgeous. I think you're going to love it. So this is an experiment because I'm using Saunders Waterford block of paper for the first time. I'm just having some fun with it. So let's paint. I'm starting with a very loose mix of ultramarine blue and cobalt blue for the sky behind the cherry blossoms. For negative painting, like in the cherry blossoms, I always paint the background first. Um, I'm using Saunders Waterford paper. It's a great experiment for me. I'm really, I'm enjoying it. I like the texture a lot. Um, notice that I'm using a little bit more of the cobalt blue on the bottom of the painting, a little bit more of the ultramarine on the top of the painting um, sky. And I'm keeping my sky strokes really loose and the rough the rough press of the Saunders paper, Waterford paper is really making a difference. I'm using rough press, 140 pound and a block, obviously. Now that I've done the background, um, I'm going in with some of the bright yellow for the leaves and I'm just dashing this around once again I'm keeping it really really loose in the background I want it to feel like they're they're almost they're floating in the wind right so now it's time for the cherry blossoms. Now that I've roughed in the background, I'm using some quinacridone red and I'm making it a little pinker with um, a, a touch of cobalt violet. Some cobalt blue. And then I have a couple slightly mixed colors and I'm going to mix them together on my palette from here. So I'm wanting the, the back of the cherry blossoms is very, um, it has more depth in it. So I need that to push back. I need it a little bit darker, but this is a very easy area to overwork. I have gone around with a wax crayon and reserved some of my most important highlights. However, make sure that you preserve all the highlights you can you can use gouache of course and actually i'm planning on using some gouache because the little sepals and everything of this was just too much it would have been too fussy to try to use um masking to carve out every little thing i wanted it looser so i just want to use a touch of gouache at the end so that means all I have to worry about is shaping the petals. I don't have to worry about reserving anything in the center of the, the, um, the petals. Which, you know, sometimes you to do a really loose painting, um, you just need to paint over it and then paint back. Quinacridone red. You notice I'm really bad about starting out with mixes and everything all done exactly how I want. And then I tend to use more and more pure pigments as I move along. But that's fine because I know what the mixes are going to be and I just do it on the palette. I mean on the paper. So I'm pulling some of the background in there but it's more of a purpley pinky because it's very very faint pink tinge they look white but it's a very faint pink tinge in there and the sky is this bright deep blue behind it and see I'm just moving around and shaping a lot of the purples and yellows and tinges of pink it's still a very limited palette and I'm going to want some strong darks in there because that's what's going to make the white petals show up. And you can see some wax resist right here where I didn't want to lose that, those light highlights there. And 
Now don't be afraid to put the paint on darker um, than you're going to want it to dry to because watercolor paint dries about half as dark as you put it on is a rough, rough estimate. And after you've worked with it enough, you know exactly how dark it's going to dry. So you need to put it on a little bolder. Um, this has a fair amount of fussiness with the painting. Um, there's a lot of layers. They're very pale layers because we're dealing with white flowers. So I do have the bold in the background, but I'm going to be going back in and fussing with it. This is not something that would be okay with a bolder flower color, but with white, you want the multiple, very subtle um, layers of it. And you take full advantage of those darks because the darks behind it and the darks in the flower, like in the center here, that's what shapes the, it's what gives it depth and form. It's what shapes the objects. And what we're looking for is, what I'm looking for in this is just kind of a butterfly feeling of they're moving in the wind and fluttering along. And you want to pull some of the sky color in to the petals because they're, they are translucent and you can see some of that. But then they have that little bit of a pink tinge which is why the cobalt violet. I'm using a lot of dry brush. Dry brush was, um, rough press paper was the perfect paper for that. It really, it makes a difference. Um, gives you that nice sparkly effect. The one thing I am not happy with the Saunders Waterford paper on this particular piece was it um, is not as heavily sized as Arsh or Twin Rocker, which is what I normally use. And that meant that I couldn't pull whites off. I couldn't pull colors and pigments off as well as I normally could, even when it was grainy, non-staining pigments like Cobalt Violet or the Ultramarines or any of that. That should be able to be pulled off very easily and I wasn't able to do with it. Um, I really love the texture of it. It's much rougher than, well, obviously Twin Rocker because Twin Rocker says it comes in rough, but it's really cold press. And um, Arsh ha has an okay rough texture, but this has a great sparkly rough texture. Um, I don't know if the blocks are less heavily sized. I mean, it, it doesn't seem, sometimes there's a difference between the blocks and the actual paper, so that might be true. Um, it seems to me that where you really need a lot of sizing is when you're on the road painting, and that's where you need this um, blocks in the extra gelatin because you're less planned in the, than in the studio, so. I don't know. I use a lot of blocks now with painting with kids because that's one less step I have to do before I get to the good stuff. So all these darks are really, uh, it's very important that the flowers are connecting. There's some point that every single flower is connected to the other flowers, and that's really, really critical. I can't emphasize how critical it is when you're doing a cluster of florets like this. Um, the darks behind it, you need those darks for the shapes um, and to make it look like flowers, right? But... If they're not connected in some way, every single flower, then they're going to read as a bunch of separate little, little balls, little flowers, and it's not going to be a connected painting. And the idea here is that you have the group of the flowers and it's functioning as a whole. A little bit of splatter, I have to do it. Um, it helps loosen up the painting. And this is much, this is an effervescent, sketchy sort of painting. Don't think that there weren't planning because there were several sketches that went into this before I got the actual sketchy type of painting. 
White flowers require a lot of planning because while I will use gouache on it, I want to use a lot of white paper and I need to know where I'm putting everything. So whenever you're doing a group of flowers like this, make sure they connect and then you're painting the whole group and that's the subject, not individual ones kind of dotted and isolated. So that's part of the whole don't isolate your subject. So even more darks, some quin rust, and that, can you tell how if you just use a pigment in one place in a painting, it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Now I know that in a few minutes when I have the the background of the flowers shaped, I'm going to be adding them back into the little um, anthers. And so we'll have the little, little spots of the quinacridone rust all through there. But just notice that you don't ever want to introduce a color or a pigment in just one place. You want to Move it around the painting. Have it at least three places, right? So a little bit of the quinacridone rust and the, um, the little fruits. And that's actually, I'm using a lot of quinacridone reds in there. I want them to be very bright. But it's another excuse to move the quinacridone rust around the painting so it's not so harsh. It, it's integrated. <laughs> so Notice how I'm being a little fussy here. I'm only making some extreme darks in a couple places, not everywhere. And I'm pulling it around the painting, and part of the painting is darker than some of the others. Good old Hogarth curve, right? And um, I'm just moving that around, but things like that petal must be attached to the other petals. And that's tricky. And don't let anyone tell you that it's not tricky. It's a fun piece. Whatever you do to it, it's probably going to look like good cherry blossoms. But the finer points, like connecting the petals um, of all the flowers and um, doing the layers of white, where it all looks like white, it all reads like white, but you're using enough different colors and different values so that it gives it depth. And those are the subtleties. And unfortunately, or fortunately, the more you paint, the more subtleties you find and the more interesting it gets. So it's the one thing, painting is the one thing that I have never in my life, I can't even dream about being bored of it because there's always so much to learn and it's so exciting and Every painting is an adventure. So now I've done most of the background of the whites and I'm leaving myself the freedom. If I want to do a bit more, I can. And I'm working on just a couple little dabs. And oh, I'm not a dabby painter, so this is, this is difficult for me. Um, of some darks in there just to push those back a little bit more. And see how in some of them I'm connecting them with the dark and the background because really it's a very small area where they all join up. So you're going to see the dark from the background um, behind the petals, between the petals, it, where they join. And always remember to look at what you're painting. Notice how this is just much easier with the dry brush because it's white, so a lot of it is texture. 
I'm much more interested in texture than the colors are all very subtle, but you know, you're dealing with layers of blue and stuff like that. So, all right, I'm going around and doing the um, stamens and the little tiny dots for those anthers. A little bit of a scribble there just to do that in the the finger painting on dry brush on rough press paper perfect let's see how the um, just those little dots kind of gives a focus it was all very blurred and wishy-washy and all of a sudden with the dark dots of the um, the anthers you, you have a focus now and the trick is you don't want to, they, you put one on and you think, ooh, that looks good. I got to do more of that. But don't. Don't do them everywhere. Do them just enough. A bit of splatter paint just to loosen that up so it is just enough. Because you can see in a couple places, I went a little crazy. I'm using white gouache just to do those very delicate filaments that and this area right there, which I tried to pull out and it did not pull out. So that's the one place that I used it on the petals, I think, that wasn't a harsh highlight because the paper apparently just doesn't have much um, sizing on it. So what, what you put down there is what you're going to get. Good to keep in mind. So I'm re-emphasizing in some of the central flowers and I blurred the, the dark in some of the other ones. And here's the finished piece. So that's my Cherry Blossoms painting and I hope it inspires you to paint your own. For reference photos, please visit my website, paintingwatercolor.com and all the information you need, paint colors, reference photo, everything is on there as usual. And I really appreciate y'all painting with me. I love spring. This is just so much fun. Thank you very much for watching. Happy painting.